Good morning and welcome to the video for Wednesday, May the 20th for third grade. This is going to be our last video of the school year. We made it. Um, so I'm really excited. I hope you are too. The homework for this will come out on Thursday and we will have some other fun activities uh, either on the YouTube channel or Google Classroom or both. Uh, so I know the field day thing is something that is planned to come out on the YouTube uh, channel. I believe I'm going to put it up on Thursday but I may have it scheduled for you guys for Friday if you're a Risen Christ student. So let's go ahead and take a look at our lesson. They wanted us to work with tracing a pattern block that's a hexagon. We're probably not going to have those lying around at home, but what we do have is something already drawn on the page for us. Uh, so what they want us to do is to take our hexagon, divide it into two equal parts. So there are two different ways to do that. So we can draw a line across the center like this. Um, I probably could use my straight edge for that. Um, this is going to give me a one, two, three, four, five sided object. So I'm going to have a pentagon for that. If I were to go the other direction and go from top to bottom, I am going to end up with a four sided object that is going to not have two pairs of parallel sides. So that means I'm going to have a trapezoid. And our fraction of one of these two parts is going to be and then the fraction that names the whole area of the shape would be two halves. And so explain how we know the two shapes have the same area. Well, we started with a regular polygon, and if we divide it evenly in half, um, even if we did it uh, this direction, that actually would have probably been another way that we could have gotten a trapezoid, we would end up having to have the same area for both sides. Uh, number two, predict what would happen if we divide it into three shapes. I honestly don't know how to do that and get it evenly. I'm guessing that it would be something like this, but I don't think that actually works um, in any way that I've tried it before. I can get two, I can get four, and I can get six shapes on the inside, but I've never figured out exactly how to do three. Uh, I might figure and make them all equal. So our fraction that would name that would be one-third because I would divide it into three equal parts, and our total would be three-thirds for the entire shape. For number three, show we can, how we can divide it into four shapes. So again, we are combining both of these. If we wanted to go to uh, six shapes, we would go this way as well. So, or sorry, this uh, if we went to six shapes, we would actually uh, connect both of our corners. We'll do that at a later point in time in this lesson uh, on number two. So uh, as we move forward, let's go ahead and take a look at this. We have a rectangle that has four smaller shapes inside. They are not all the same size, uh, which is one of the questions they're going to ask, but they are all the same size. They all take up the same area. So we are going to have a unit fraction of one over four because we have four of those shapes inside. The area of each part is going to be one, two, three, four, five blocks. How many parts does it take uh, that are one quarter size to make a whole? It would be four. Is the shape of each part the same? No, it's not. And is the area the same? Yes. And the way that we know is we can actually count the blocks and all four of these shapes take up five unit blocks. So as we go uh, to this one, we want to draw a rectangle and divide it into six equal parts. So the easiest way to do that uh, would be to take our shape and go this way. So we make three equal rows out of the shape, and then we can go down the middle here. And so I'm going to have six equal parts, our fraction that names uh, one part, our unit fraction would be one sixth. The area of each part is going to be one, two, three, four unit blocks. And each part would be one sixth of the whole shape's area. So for number one for Sharon's show, uh, we want to divide the trapezoid into three equal parts. So I'm going to give you a moment to think about how you would do that. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to. This one's much easier uh, than uh, some people give it credit for. Um, and when you're ready, go ahead and hit play. All right, so one of the easiest ways that we can do this is to actually make this shape and make a triangle inside. And then we are going to have three different triangles 
And so we are going to say that we are going to have a triangle uh, for the name of the new shape, and the fraction that names each part of the whole would be one third. For number two, uh, again, as I mentioned, we are going to draw diagonally through here. And then we are going to go down like this, and that gives us six parts. Uh, now, the one part that I wasn't quite sure about, if I were to take out one of these lines, then I lose... Uh, having equal size parts. So I'll give you an idea of how that might work. So when I was saying I don't understand how to get three equal parts out of that, that's part of the reason why. Uh, so for number three, we could make a straight line going down, or we can make a straight line going across, or we could make a straight line going diagonally. So I'm going to make a diagonal line uh, since it's easier for me to draw and know that I've got it in the right spot. So each of these reflecting uh, sides of the shape are going to be equal to each other. For number four, if we want to do something easy, we can go ahead and quarter like this, and then cut each half in half one more time to make eight equal size uh, parts. Number five, if we are going to make eight equal parts, we can go across. So now I have four equal parts. We can cut it in half, and we have eight equal parts, kind of similar to what we did for number four. Um, again, for number six, uh, oh, sorry, they want us to uh, write the area of each part as a unit fraction. So we would have eight equal parts. The unit fraction would be one-eighth. For this one, it's going to be one-sixth. And for this one, it is going to be one fourth. Now this one might be a little bit trickier uh, to figure out how we need to do that. So I will explain that one in just a moment. To get our six equal parts, we are gonna do uh, something similar to what we already did back on the other page. And so that would give us that. So for this one, what I would recommend is we count the number of blocks and it looks like we have 12 blocks. So the way that we are going to do this is to cut it up into four shapes that are each three blocks. So I will let you choose how you do that. And let's see, I think I'm gonna do this. And then this, and then this. And that's gonna give me four uh, block or four uh, shapes inside there that each make up three blocks. So that would be uh, the easiest way to do that. I'm not going to uh, do the problem solving questions for this. So let's take a look at what you're going to be working with for the homework. Again, we're just worrying about drawing lines. So most of these we've already done. Um, Number five is going to be a little bit different. So again, you're going to want to think about how many parts we have on the inside and how we would make it into six equal parts. So one of the ways uh, that we could divide it would be this way. But if we do that, we may end up falling into a situation where we can only do four parts. So again, I would suggest you count up the number of blocks, divide it by six to figure out how many blocks are going to have to be in each group. And then a uh, similar kind of thing for number four. It's not, it just because we can make a line here doesn't mean that that's going to work evenly for the number of blocks that we need in each group. Uh, so for number eight for my students, I don't have a way to do that. So what I would suggest that you do is use the example from number seven to do that. So that will save you having to draw. So you're gonna make it into two equal parts and then write the unit fraction and then explain what you did. Uh, and then everything else on the back should make sense. So for number five uh, and number six, if you are having to do those problems, a square is going to be a four-sided object 
that has sides of the same length and has all right angles. And then a rectangle is going to be a polygon that has uh, four right angles, but does not have sides of the same length. So just as a reminder with our Venn diagram, if it can be both, it's going to go in the center. If it's just one or the other, it's going to go in the larger portion on the outside of the circle. So those are the homework problems for the lesson for today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out in Google Classroom. Um, I'm very happy uh, that we've made it to this point, but I will still be here if you need any additional assistance. Um, I'll have additional videos coming out throughout the summer as well, and I'll talk a little bit about that in the homework videos. So hope you have a great day. I will see you in the next video, which will be coming out on Thursday morning.